Joining us uh, here is Antoine Half, head of energy research at New Edge USA. He's also a former principal administrator for the International Energy Agency to talk about uh, this and to talk about prices here. Carolyn, actually, we're looking at uh, oil today, seeing it go uh, up through $80. And a lot of commodities have kind of uh, gained some price action here. Some people say because of the Federal Reserve. Do you think there's any weight to that? Yeah, uh, I think it's clearly driven by a positive bullish macro view. Um, equities uh, rallying, uh, oil and equities and other commodities have been trading in sync uh, very often in the last couple of years. And uh, confidence that the liquidity will be there. How much of it is that you can borrow dollars cheaply and then buy uh, these kind of assets, well, whether in emerging markets or you know, The contango, the curve in the futures, uh, crude futures, is pretty steep, pretty steep. So it pays to put all in storage or to hold on to uh, assets over time. Uh, the fundamentals are not particularly strong. You know, demand for crude is not particularly robust. Uh, U.S. refineries are running at extremely low levels. Uh, typical more of refinery uh, hurricane disruptions than uh, anything else. Well, Antoine, what's a more realistic price then, in your view, based on the fundamentals? Well, I'm not sure what realistic means these days. I mean, if you if you looked at the fundamentals of supply and demand and just at the at the level of inventories, then you think that oil should be priced you know, $30, $20, $40, $50. If you put some kind of adjustment factor to that, maybe you get to $60. Mm -hmm. uh, but this is not necessarily a relevant type of exercise. You, know, you, you have to look at the, uh, the other drivers of the market, at the liquidity, at the, at the macro. But the uh, macro environment, market. though, is not such a great one. I think about, was it Goldman Sachs today uh, reigning in their forecast? You look at the IMF reigning in their forecast, certainly for the United States. Um, but everything has kind of come true, down. True, true. So the global macro environment really isn't very supportive of higher oil Which prices. Which is why this rally you know, may, not be, may not have very long-lasting power. You know, it may be a blip. We've seen that in April. We had a kind of run-up in prices in April and then it fell back 20% you know, or so. So we could see a repeat of that. We could see you know, the way of uh, inventories uh, making itself felt in the market again. Mm -hmm. And yet we still see uh, oil companies running around and buying up assets. Actually, GE and Dresser, I mean, not even an oil company coming out and paying $3 billion. Right. Uh, why, do you, why is this? Because the, the valuations for these companies are low? I think it's a combination of things. I think on the one hand, you have corporate America being back in the buying mode, at least GE. Uh, more confident in the future, seeing on piles of cash, not willing to hire yet in a meaningful way, but willing to spend, which is probably feeds into kind of more bullish macro view. Uh, then there's expectation that demand for energy services will continue to grow outside of the United States. That's a pretty safe bet. You now we've seen demand rise in China, in Latin America, in the Middle East. Uh, that's most certainly going to continue to be the case. And then perhaps the, the uh, tightness in capacity that we had felt a couple of years ago, uh, when you know, demand was very strong, capacity was tight, prices were high, that's, that has eased and that may ma make some companies targets. Well, you know, do you anticipate then more consolidation, another round of consolidation in the energy industry? I think we're starting to see some consolidation in the, in the service industry. And the service industry uh, benefits from very strong demand, partly because NOCs, national or companies in, in uh, non-NOC countries, yes. now tend to bypass the alliance with, with international oil companies mm -hmm. and develop the re their reserves directly with the help of service companies. What do you, what do you think we're going to see as a result of uh, the oil spill in the Gulf? Uh, and the moratorium there. Uh, I mean, do you think we're going to see less deep water drilling? Is it going to cost more money to do deep water drilling because you have to do it safer? Are you going to see more oil field, actual on land oil field services companies get business? Well, I think the industry widely expects the moratorium to be lifted anytime soon. Uh, so that probably will result in a fairly limited uh, suspension of, of drilling on the larger scheme, scheme of things. Mm -hmm. um, I think we're likely to see a moderate increase in costs just to be in compliance and to, to okay. meet safety standards. All right. uh, but the, the increase in costs will be moderate and will be offset by less demand maybe and a shift to other areas. All right, we're going to leave it on that note. Antoine, thank you so much. Antoine Health, Head of Energy Research over at New Edge USA.